Hey guys, my name is Matt Johnson, and every time I post a wedding filmmaking behind the scenes video, I get a lot of shock comments from people saying, how are you using a manual focus lens with a gimbal? People ask, because I still film weddings with a Sony a7S II and an adapted Sigma Nikon mount 24 millimeter lens. This adapter doesn't support autofocus, so how am I manually focusing on a gimbal? And why? Matt, why don't you just buy native lenses that have autofocus? Today, I'm gonna walk you through the techniques I use to manually focus this lens while using a gimbal. And hopefully that will help you if you find yourself using a camera or lens that doesn't support autofocus as well. I'm also gonna tell you why I often prefer manual focus lenses when filming. Let's start with the techniques, which is why you clicked on this video. To use a manual focus lens with your gimbal, my technique is pretty simple, and it's comprised of three things. To sum them up, shoot with a wider lens, make sure that lens has a closed aperture, and keep the same distance away from the subject you're filming. Let's dive in deeper. First off, you have the lens, and I typically use a wider lens on a gimbal. I love this Sigma 24 millimeter f1.4 lens. The reason I use a wider lens is because the wider your lens is, the more is in focus even at more open apertures. You ever use a fisheye lens? I have an eight millimeter lens, and I'm not even sure why it has a focus ring, because adjusting it makes basically no difference in the focus of the image because it's so wide. So this Sigma lens at 24 millimeter is no fisheye, but at more open apertures, like f1.4, where it's letting in a ton of light, it is still wide enough that it keeps a lot of things in focus. If you use a wide lens on your gimbal, you're going to be able to keep more things in focus. I don't have a wide lens, Matt. That's okay. The second technique is gonna help you regardless of what lens you have. The second part of my technique to use a manual focus lens on a gimbal is you want your lens to have a closed aperture. What are you saying, Matt? Set my lens to f22 so everything's really dark, but at least it's all in focus? No, nothing that extreme but I do want you to be very aware of the aperture that your lens is set to while you are filming. In my experience, on a gimbal, you usually want more things in focus. You may be shooting a wider, establishing landscape shot, or a shot of a wedding couple wide in a field. These are all places where you don't need to be shooting at f1.4. In fact, I rarely go down to f1.4 on a gimbal unless I'm filming a wedding reception exit and I need the light. I'm oftentimes at f4, f5.6, or f8. Now thinking about a wedding reception exit with a couple walking toward the camera as they leave the venue ties in very well to the third part of my technique for manually focusing with a gimbal, and that is keep the same distance away from your subject that you are filming. All lenses have a plane of focus. Everything inside that plane is in focus, everything outside of it is blurry. Here I am inside the plane of focus. Now I'm out and I'm blurry. Back inside the plane of focus, Back out of it, now I'm blurry. So if I'm filming with a gimbal, you're not gonna see me filming a shot where I'm running up to the couple from wide to tight, changing the focus as I go. No, instead I'm gonna hold my gimbal with one hand and use the other to set the focus on my camera manually. And then always try to stay the same distance away from the subject I'm filming. Well that sounds boring, Matt. The point of a gimbal is you're supposed to move. You don't move? No, I move all the time. But I'm very careful about how I move. You will oftentimes see me moving either with the couple or in a circle around the couple. I never move in closer or further away because they won't be in focus. If you stay the same distance away from your subject, you may need to get a bit more creative with your shots, but you'll find that it's still easy to keep them in focus. And those are my techniques for using manual focus lenses on a gimbal. But why, Matt? Why don't you just buy native lenses and use autofocus? That's easy. I still don't fully trust autofocus yet. It's getting so much better with face and eye autofocus, but if I'm filming a wedding that's full of once in a lifetime critical shots that can't be missed, my brain knows what I want to have in focus. I can turn the focus ring of my lens to make my camera match up with what my brain wants. But if I'm using autofocus, I just have to hope that my camera knows what my brain wants. If you're filming a bride walking down the aisle or a couple exiting the reception, can you fully trust that your camera isn't going to face detect on one of the people cheering on the side or on the background, etc.? I've seen one too many posts online where someone is begging for help because their camera decided to autofocus on something other than the subject that it was supposed to be focused on. For that reason, I still choose to manually focus. You may think I'm crazy though. Please leave me a comment down below and let me know if you use autofocus or if you are still manually focusing like I am. 
With that, I hope this video has been helpful to you, especially if you still have a lot of manual focus lenses and you've been considering using them with a gimbal. Also, if you happen to be a wedding filmmaker like me, you probably want to book more couples and film more weddings. For this reason, I've created a free guide that's gonna give you some practical changes that you can make right now to your wedding filmmaking business to start booking more couples and filming more weddings. It's a free gift to you. You can download it at the link down in the video description. Thanks so much for watching and have a great day.